Hey everyone, this is Mr. Wistar, and in this lesson we're going to take a look at the merge sort algorithm. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this lesson, and it can get a little complicated because it's going to involve recursion. So uh, buckle up, and if there's anything that seems confusing, just try to pause it, maybe go back and watch it again until you feel like you're really comfortable. Um, again, we've talked about sorting a lot. We're going to be trying to find another sorting algorithm that can take a collection of data and put it in the proper order. Merge sort is different from all the other ones that we've covered so far because, as I said, it's recursive. Here's how it works, and this is maybe the most important and trickiest thing to get your head around. You don't actually sort the data using merge sort like you do with the other algorithms. The way that merge sort works is we're going to take the array and we're going to divide it in half. And we're going to keep dividing each half into halves into halves again until eventually we've just broken down the array into a whole bunch of little tiny arrays of size 1. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put them back together into larger and larger and larger arrays. This time we're going to put them back together in order. So if you take two arrays of size 1 and combine them into an array of size 2 that's in order, now that array of size 2 is in order. And if you take two arrays of size 2 and put them together into an array of size 4, and put them in order, then they're in order, and so on and so forth, until eventually we have put the a whole array, we've put those original two halves back in order, um, and now the array is sorted. But again, it's going to be, when we look at the code, it's going to seem a little confusing, because we're not actually doing any work until we start putting the array back together. It is faster than insertion sort and selection sort, and at the end we'll talk about why. Here's a diagram, uh, and in, instead of showing you code in JGrasp, I'm going to refer back to this diagram. But this sort of illustrates what I was talking about. So if we've got an array with eight things in it, what we're going to uh, effectively do with our recursive calls is to break it down into those eight subarrays of size 1 that you see down at the bottom. And so what we're going to be doing is taking those arrays of size 1, and we're going to be merging them into sorted arrays of size 2. Then we're going to take those arrays, merge them into sorted arrays of size 4, and then merge them into arrays of size 8. The way that this works, the reason why merge sort works, is that at each step, the subarrays that you're combining are already sorted. And so putting them back in order together um, is relatively straightforward. Let's talk about how the code works. The first thing that you need to know is how to write that merge algorithm. And what this algorithm is going to do is it's going to take a subsection of our array that's really two pieces. So if we go back to this previous diagram, let's say we were going to take um, the two arrays of size 2 and merge them together into an array of size 4. Let's say we're going to take that 2, 5, 4, 6. Well, the merge, array, uh, the merge function call for that would be merge with our array. Uh, BEG is our beginning index, so in this case it would be 0, because that's where the 2 is located. MID is going to be the middle of the array of size 4. So in this case, MID actually ends as, acts as the end of the, uh, the left-hand piece that we're merging together. So we're going to be merging the piece of the array from begin to MID with the piece of the array from middle plus one to end. So here's how merge works. And again, you're going to see this code, this pseudocode broken up over four separate slides. They're all part of the same merge function. It's a big function. First thing we have to do is we have to create a temporary array because we need workspace. And we're going to create it with the same size as the original array so that we can reuse the same indexes. We're going to create two temporary index variables, each pointing at the beginning of the two pieces that we're merging together. So in this case, index 1 starts at begin, index 2 starts at mid plus 1. So again, getting back to our diagram, index 1 would be starting at the 2, um, and index 2 would be starting at the 4. Uh, and we're also going to need a third temporary variable uh, index to keep track of where we need to copy things into our temporary array. All of that leads up to this loop, which looks pretty complicated, so let's break it down. We're going to have a while loop that keeps running while both idx1 is less than mid, which is the end of the left half, and idx2 is less than or equal to end, 
which is the end of the right half. So essentially, this loop is going to keep going while both parts are st still have at least one element left in them to look at. Um, as soon as either the left or the right piece um, is completely used up, the loop is going to quit. Now what happens inside the loop? Well, each time through the loop, essentially what we do is we take the item from the left half, that's IDX1, and we compare it to the item from the right half, that's IDX2. If IDX1 comes first, then we put it in the temporary array, and we increment temp index in IDX1. Otherwise, if IDX2 comes first, then we put IDX, uh, the array element at IDX2 into the temporary array, and we increment temp index in IDX2. So either way, we're essentially taking the next uh, smallest or the next uh, item um, that we're merging out of whichever half, um, out of whichever one comes first. And again, remember, this loop is going to end as soon as we run out of items in the left half or the right half. After that, we have to have two more loops. Um, this first loop says if there's still stuff left in the left half, then I need to copy it into my temporary array because uh, we don't want to forget any of the elements that we're trying to merge. The second loop says exactly the same thing, thing for the right half. And I want you to think about this and study it. Remember what our condition was for the loop quitting. One of those two things has to be false, which means one of these two loops isn't going to run. We need the other one to run, though, in order to clean up the leftovers. And that's what this section of the merge function does. So by the time this section is done, we've copied everything from the left half and everything from the right half into our temporary array, but we have stitched them together so that now they're in the correct order. The last step is a loop which takes everything from the temporary array and copies it back into the original array in the same indexes where the uh, elements were originally located. And this has the effect of sorting that part of the original array. And that's how merge works. Now, how do we combine that with our actual sorting algorithm? Well, this is our first example of um, a very common recursive programming technique which is to have a non-recursive method for the users to call, which then turns around and calls the recursive method that actually does the work. So we're going to have our uh, merge sort function be the same as what we're used to having. So merge sort takes two parameters, the array and the number of elements. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a recursive function called msort, which takes the array, but it, it takes two array indexes. It's going to take begin and end, which are the same exact begin and ends as the ones that we were working with, with the ones that we were using for merge. So to, in our non-recursive user function, we're going to set begin to zero for the very first call, and we're going to set end to n minus one for the very first call, because that's the indexes of the entire array. And then we're going to call our recursive function. So what does our recursive function do? Well, here's how it works. This is sort of the magic of merge sort. Here's where we have our recursive method. What's the base case? The base case is if begin is greater than or equal to end, which means we have a piece of the array of size one or less. And in that case, there's nothing to do, because array slices of size one or less are automatically sorted. Now if the size of the subsection of our array is greater than one, then we have to do merge sort. And Remember the way that works is that we divide the array in half and then we merge sort each half. And once that's done, then remember we're going to get all the way down to that diagram and eventually we're going to get all the way down to the point where we've broken everything into arrays of size 1. And in that case, the, the M sort calls will be finished, and then we can call merge. And so for the parameters begin and end, we're going to um, find the middle uh, between those two uh, array indexes, which is just the average of begin and end, and we're going to pass that to our merge function as the mid parameter. 
again, if you try running this through, um, if you run it through by hand or run it through with the um, playing cards, you'll see how it works. Last thing, I know this has been a long video, but bear with me. Um, we want to talk about why merge sort is so much more efficient than insertion sort or selection sort. Because you're probably thinking, that's a lot of code. It should be slower, but it's actually a lot faster. And the reason why has to do with how the process repeats itself. Um, just like with insertion sort and selection sort, we really have kind of two nested loops. The inside loop is in the merge function. There's a bunch of loops in there. You saw them all. Um, so that sort of counts as one big inside loop. The outside loop is really essentially covered by the recursion. Remember, recursion is like repetition, but it doesn't involve looping. Where merge sort runs a lot faster is that we're going to have way fewer recursive calls than we would have calls to our outside loop in selection sort or insertion sort. Here's why. Um, without getting into a lot of math, the easiest way to think about it is this. If we have an array of size 8, remember that merge sort keeps working until you break the array down into size 1. So really what we're asking is how many times do you have to divide an array of size 8 in half in order to get down to an array of size 1? And the answer, if you do the math in your fingers, 8 divide by 2 you get 4, divide by 2 you get 2, divide by 2 you get 1. That's three times. So for an array of size 8, it takes three levels of recursion or three repetitions to reach the base case. And in fact, if you have n elements, um, the number of um, layers of recursion is just the log base 2 of n. Um, and that really starts to add up. If you look at this table here, for example, um, the number, this is the numbers in this table here tell you how many times the loops in merge have to run. So for 10, um, for an array of size 10, the inside loop in insertion sort runs 100 times. Uh, but the inside loop in merge sort only runs 33 times. And that's pretty good, right? Three times, that's pretty good. But notice how as the size of n multiplies, merge sort gets better and better and better up until the point where for even an array of size a thousand which isn't very big merge sort is something like almost a um, hundred times faster um, and for a million uh, it's even way faster than that so the bigger the size of your array the bigger the payoff you get from merge sort okay that was a big lesson like I said Try to understand how merge sort works conceptually before you try to understand the pseudocode. Um, use playing cards. Lay, in, lay them out. Do merge sort yourself until you understand how it works. And then go back and take a look at the code. Because the key to the code, understanding how the code works is understanding that you can't start running merge until after you've broken the array down completely. And then you merge all your arrays of size 1, and then your arrays of size 2, and size 4 and so on and so forth. We haven't talked about what to do actually if the section of your array is odd numbered. In that case it, it doesn't matter. Just put the extra element in one half or the other. We also talked about why merge sort is a lot faster than the other two algorithms. It's because there's way fewer recursive calls. There's way fewer runs through the outer loop than there is with insertion sort or selection sort. Alright, you're all set.